Hey, what's going on everybody? JB the Ranch Mechanic here, and today we're just going to be doing a quick video on repairing the throttle linkage for a uh, mid-70s Cat D9H bulldozer. I was just up there working on the machine, checking all the fluids, and uh, working on the transmission and the scavenge pump and everything. I went to shut the machine off, and it wouldn't shut off. I moved the throttle lever all the way closed, with, which on those older machines, it just there's no electronics involved. It's just, uh, basically, it just shuts fuel off at the fuel pump, and that's what kills the engine. But unfortunately, when I shut the throttle valve all the way, it didn't shut off. It started to, and then it kind of burbled back to life. So I pushed just a little bit harder on the throttle valve just to see if maybe it was a little bit of slack I had to take out of the linkage. And instead of shutting off, the lever went <laughs> and all of, I about launched myself through the windshield. Um, and clearly the end of it completely sheared off. So I've got the old linkage here. I have both the yokes here. And what I'm gonna do, I don't like doing stuff this way. If it were up to me, and I have the ability right now, I would take this, I would cut it to length, and then I would chuck it up in my lathe. I would taper it down, just like this original piece, and then cut it to the major diameter for these threads, which I believe are 3 8 24. Um, and then I would thread this and, and you know, make it one contiguous piece of metal without any welds in it, because welds are prone to breaking, especially on heavy equipment that vibrates and bounces around a lot. But my lathe is down right now. I don't have power running to it. I don't even have it set up properly in the in the new shop behind my house yet. It's it's in there. It's just not hooked up and it's not where I want it. So I don't want to, you know, Jimmy rig power to it and not have it set up the right way and risk damaging something. So unfortunately, we're not going to be able to use that for this particular project. But what I'm going to do, I have this piece of mild steel. I don't even know how wide this is. It's thicker than the, this I don't think is the original part. I think this is a piece of hollow pipe um, that they just welded in here. And obviously the welds broke. That's what failed. And this thing has obviously seen its day. It's been abused quite a bit. This thing is very bent up. And when you have a linkage assembly like this and it's bent like this in multiple places, it effectively shortens the arm, the moment arm of that linkage and it doesn't work properly. And that's, I think, part of the issue that we're having. So I'm gonna kind of guesstimate here as to where this needs to be, cut this off to length, face it on both sides with our cutoff saw, get it as straight as I can. And then I don't like doing this. This is not the way I would do it, like I was saying, but we're gonna take these grade eight bolts and we're going to weld them on the end of this and these match up to the thread pitch and these yokes and then we'll be able to get this machine back up and running today rather than you know me screwing around with my lathe and potentially messing something up we're just going to do the weld job it is what it is so what i'm doing right now just running a tap through these old yokes because they're really rusty and really full of junk i tried threading one of these bolts in and it started kind of flattening the threads a little bit so before i completely hose this bolt just decided to clean up the yokes so i'm going to do that cut this thing to length weld these guys on that'll be that we'll go get it put back together so so probably end up being a little bit of a fast forward deal so just gonna get this done here we go much better one down next estimate how long this thing's supposed to be. Luckily, with these yokes, we do have some adjustments, so it doesn't need to be perfect. Somewhere around there. Should be good enough. My cutoff saw fired up, I'll be back. Okay guys, well, um, comedy of errors as usual. Um, my regulator for my argon bottle is leaking, so I need to get a, a new regulator. Um, I still have, I still have flow, so we're good there. Um, but the batteries in my good ESOP helmet have died somehow, so I'm running my backup helmet. Um, the TIG rod was not on the in the holder on the cart where I normally leave it, so I don't know who took it out, but I found it on the other side of the shop. This has kind of been a little bit of a headache, but anyway. Got this thing set up finally. I don't have any fancy camera equipment, so I don't know how well this is gonna be picked up on camera or if it's gonna damage the camera, hopefully it won't. But I've got the bolt as centered as I can. I cut off both ends, beveled them a little bit so we get a good weld there. We're gonna to try to just tack this real quick. It's probably gonna to wanna to lean, as because as welds cool, they shrink, so whatever side you're not tacking is gonna float away. So we'll probably end up having to mess with that a little bit to get it to seat properly, but we're just going to tack this real quick and see if we can't get it to cooperate. 
Got everything cleaned up, wire wheeled everything. I wire wheeled the coating off the bolt, cleaned everything with brake cleaner just to get any residual oil and stuff off. So we should be good to go. But right now we're just gonna do a quick tack and hopefully it works, we'll see. And there she goes. Yep, she lifted just a little bit. A little bit of an angle to the dangle. I don't have any magnets that'll reach up and articulate well enough to keep that from happening again, so. Anyway, she's tacked, so. Let's see if maybe we can tack the other side now. Let's see if we can get that to come back down. Probably not. Next. All right, guys. Well, of course, you know, um, as things have been going today, my camera just decided to stop recording um, right when I was in the middle of this. But as you can see, um, got the new one made up here. So looks a little bit better. A couple of grade eight bolts folded on the end of this mild steel rod. Slightly straighter <laughs> than the original one. Threw some new cotter pins in here. And I have a, a lock nut for this side, but there was not one on this side. Um, obviously it's kind of welded to this part that broke off. So I'm going to have to go and see if I can find another matching 3 8 24 uh, fine thread bolt in our bolt bin. But uh, I'll go do that and then we'll take this thing back up to the dozer and see if it'll go on. It's a blustery day in the neighborhood today. get situated here and we'll show you where this goes all right guys so on this machine this lever right here is sticking out that's your throttle control and that goes to a series of linkages here that end up coming out over here and that goes to your injection pump and that basically is what uh by pushing that lever all the way forward it kicks this lever all the way forward and uh, shuts fuel flow off to the engine that kills the engine so the piece of the linkage that broke off is actually the one that goes from under the dash and connects right here and passes through this hole so i'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it through from under the dash and get it bolted back up see about getting it adjusted and uh yeah we'll go from there not gonna be able to show you that because i don't have a tripod or any way to hold the camera but pretty self-explanatory it's just uh, a couple of pins that go through these uh yokes that bolt onto the spring shaft and that's it so pretty simple just got to get to it okay guys got it in there as you can see it's nice and reattached everything is good um little little tip from me not that anyone asked but on these little uh, cotter pins i see a lot of people that just bend these things all the way around you know take these ears and just either clip them off or bend them to freaking back to touch this part all you need to do is separate them just a little bit like this the only thing you do by stretching them out and bending them around backwards and all that other nonsense is make it really hard for the next guy to come in here and get these things out because you kink these things and then they're gonna break with the burr sticking off one side and it's almost impossible to get them through the solid pin to pull them out. So these are not load bearing guys. The only thing that they're here to do is to retain the solid pin in the linkage. That's doing all the load bearing work. You don't need to bend these ears all that far. Just enough to keep the pin from backing out. That's all you need. I mean, in certain applications, yeah, you gotta do that. For like, you know, tie rod ends and stuff, you gotta bend them all the way around to, to clear the boot and to clear suspension travel and all that. But 
on an application like this, not necessary. You're just making more work for yourself by, by bending those ears way out. So that's all you need to do, right about like that. Anyway, um, we're gonna go ahead and fire this thing up and check our linkage position and make sure it shuts off, first of all, that's the biggest thing. So let's fire her up and see. All right, well, let's give her a little fuel here. She shuts off, that's good. Um, the RPMs at the upper range were a little bit low, so it's not getting quite enough fuel. So I might need to adjust that linkage a little bit, but I'll mess with that off camera. But anyway, we got the linkage replaced, it works, the engine shuts off, now it's just a matter of tweaking and I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. But yeah, that's uh, just a quick job. Simple repair, not the ideal repair. I would have really liked to actually machine that rod down and thread it without having to weld anything on. Um, but you know, for a quick fix, you know, it's a ranch guys <laughs> cowboy fixes and farmer fixes are what we do out here and most of the time it works uh, you know eventually if one of those welds breaks then i'll do it the right way but for now i'm just going to get the machine back up and running anyway guys that's going to wrap it up for this video um if you like this video go ahead and click that like button share it if you think someone else would enjoy it and if you want to see more videos like this go ahead and subscribe to the channel i'm going to do as much as i can and film as much as i can we're getting to our busy season now so hopefully there'll be a lot more little quick fixes like this that i can put out and just kind of keep you guys up to speed as to what's going on out here in the middle of nowhere so anyway thanks again for watching i appreciate it hope you enjoyed it and we'll catch you on the next one see ya <laughs>